You're listening to I-95, Bangor's classic rock station with Jay Stu and Corey in the morning. Jay Stu and Corey rock. I-95, Bangor's classic rock station at 95.7 FM. Jay Stu and Corey here today on uh, hey, welcome back, buddy. Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's good to be back. You had two decent days, though. I was thinking about that. I was like, man, I hope he's out doing something in these beautiful days. Because Monday, Tuesday, were, I mean, gorgeous. Well, Monday was just everything was, no pun intended, overshadowed by the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was eclipsed by the overshadowing of the eclipse, um, which that was pretty rad. I stood out on the deck, drank some yeah. beers, hung out with the dog. Everybody's like, oh, keep your pets inside. It's like my dog, literally, he laid down on his kitchen bed and that was it. He's just like, eh, okay. <laughs> he was not impressed or yeah. cared. The only thing that was weird about it was uh, when it hit like the, the peak, you know, for around here anyway, mm -hmm. uh, all the birds in my neighborhood went silent except for the owls and oh, then all the owls started hooting i was just like this is so weird it's like it's like peep 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 it just stops and i was like okay this is odd and then i just hear coo, 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 come out of the backwoods like a bunch of them back and forth it's like oh all right well this weird. is weird this is like right uh this is how horror movies start i get it right huh but whatever. Well, at least you didn't get stuck in the traffic. I mean, no. I'm still reading accounts of people who were like, it took them 12 hours to go what would usually take three or less. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's insane to me. I don't know. Monday, I actually, uh, I took the dog for a spin <clears throat> and we went, I, I kind of went looking for traffic. You know, I wanted to know where the traffic <laughs> was because you didn't hear all about it. But by the time I get out and about, I'm, I'm guessing people were well on to where they were. Like northbound traffic by then was pretty quiet. But then I started yeah. seeing the videos and photos of Holton and Dover and, and all the towns where people were just like flooding into. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. So it's over. It's all that matters. It's, yep, it's over. They had a couple good days. Everything hopefully got a nice boost in the economy up there. And then everyone's back on their, on their sweet way. See you in... 55 years. <laughs> yeah. So, well, good to have you back. We got a morning music matchup. Uh, we have a Talking Heads morning music matchup today. Psycho Killer versus Antu Was, and right now it's a straight up tie. Yesterday was weird since you've been gone. Uh, we've had some incredibly close battles. Like yesterday's and the day before were all determined by like one vote. So it looks like today is starting off that way as well. We'll have to see Damn who ends funny. up winning. Which, There's still lots wrong. of time. I know, but I'm telling you, it was close. It was wicked close. I believe you. We'll see. So yeah, let's uh, let's get the battle in nine nine one nine seven one three right there at the i ninety five Facebook page, the trusty i ninety five app. You know what to do. It's the morning music matchup. I ninety five, Jason and Corey on Bangor's classic rock station. <clears throat> so this morning, mm -hmm. I walk into the the Irving down on Main Street in Bangor, the one. Uh, you know, across from the Hollywood slots, right next to the Cross Center. Yeah. And I was shown the greatest thing I've ever seen ever in a convenience store that I've never, ever, ever, ever seen in a convenience store before. Okay. Self-checkout. In the convenience store? In a convenience store. You know, I walk up, the lady's like, oh, you can use the scan and go. I was like, what? Because there was like a bunch of people in line. She's like, are you paying with a card? And I was like, yeah. And I look and she goes, yeah, right here. You just set your stuff down and it like x-ray visions what's sitting there and tells you what it is. And then you just pay for it and you walk out. That can't be. Um, amazing. Yes, it, it was. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure it is amazing. But I, I would think that of all the places that end up getting ripped off, that would be like the number one target, like a convenience store, because it's. I don't convenient. care. I know you don't care. You don't <laughs> it's care. like I'm down with this. I, I so every time I go in there now, I'm just going to be like kabling down on the thing and then out the door. Wow. Spits out your little receipt, the whole nine. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I love it because you're like, I don't have to people. Fabulous. No, you know what? It, you know what kills me, and and I know I'll take a lot of flack for this. Uh -huh. But it, it's it's the it's the five a.m. lottery ticket people. Oh yeah, you know it's like because you, yeah, I'm in a hurry before work. I don't have time for you to sit here and go. I'll take four number twos. 
and take six number 31s. You know, like, I don't need that mm-hmm. in my life. <laughs> well, my favorite is, like, when they stand there and they scratch it before they get out of line because they want to redo yeah. whatever it is. Or they're cashing them in and then just buying more. Like, because yeah. cashing it in is a little bit of a process. Oh, look, yeah. there's no other. Well, there is another way. Half the stores have uh, lottery ticket vending machines. So you could just put it in, you know, put the money in yourself. Oh, you can do and, that? Wow. At Hannaford, they have Oh, interesting. Yeah, this, it's, it's, it's scratch tickets. how much I play the lottery. I ought to. I ought to, but I'm the unluckiest person ever. So You'd have I'll to borrow money, money from your kids to buy scratch tickets. You don't it's need true. that. true, and then I, then I would somehow <laughs> owe them. I would owe, not the kids, but the, the, the lottery people would be like, we need you to pay us some more, and we're going to have to. This is a, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. You win, but. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They got scan and go with the Irving. I was so excited. So I excited. Bet. It was in my world. It was like it was like doves came down out of the sky, and they were crepuscular <laughs> rays from the sun. God's light shining on me, even at four a.m. when I was at the store. It's like, oh god, I this can is the get best my thing. coffee and skip a line. Yep. Wow. How about that? Yeah. It felt like you. free coffee. They could have charged me ten times more, and it still would have felt like free coffee when I walked out. I've been like, I'm so happy for you. What I walked you out go? like the Monopoly guy. Like I put in my monocle, threw on my top hat, and I was out the door. Like, rah, rah, out of my way, bucko! You know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right, that's good to know. Good little tip there. So, is it just is is it right up at the counter? Yeah. So there's like huh. there's the two cash registers. Mm-hmm. And then just to the right of those, there's this little thing. It, it, for the longest time, I thought it was like a food warmer, you know, something like that, like a heat lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not the longest time. It hasn't been there that long. But, you know, like the first day I noticed it, I was just like, wow, why, why would they have a heat lamp up at the counter? Like they're doing prime rib over there? Like <laughs> <laughs> Irving prime rib. <laughs> well, Delicious. Okay, now, first of all, gross. also then, wh- how long has that thing been up at the counter? I, I don't know. Huh? I don't know. You but missed I, all these opportunities to not have to people. I'll never miss it again. <laughs> no, I know you won't. <laughs> wow. It'll be perfect. Okay. All right, let's wrap up this matchup. It's what, Talking Heads? It's talking we heads. Had? So far, it's a little more and she was than Psycho Killery. Okay, right? well, that seems, that gives me hope yeah. for humanity in general. Well, and people are, seem to be, because uh, this is more than once this has been mentioned, uh, that, that and she was is one that we don't get to play often. In, in fact, your buddy Polly, Polly by the Shore, he's like one of my favorite bands, make it a triple play of it, everyone wins. So maybe oh, we'll have enough. to do that at some point in time. Wicked. But today we're just Psycho Killer and Anchi Was. Those are your those are your options. And right now Anchi Was is ahead a little. Yep. All right. Well, let's wrap up the matchup. When we come back, we'll have our winner. Stay right here. I ninety five Van Gore's classic rock station. Jay Stu and Corey here with Anchi Was taking the top spot. So uh, Psycho means- Killer is the Friday song. Okay, listen to this Friday lineup. You're gonna love this. <laughs> I yes. <laughs> Um, Bowie Space Oddity, because we did spacey songs for Monday for the Eclipse. Seems um, logical. Ruby Tuesday from the Stones for Tuesday. Uh, Incubus is Drive, and then Psycho Killer from, from Talking Heads. Yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be weird. That makes my brain hurt. Yeah. You know what doesn't make my brain hurt, though? The super sweet picture that Chris uh, Sacklax has put up there of himself and David Byrne from when David came up and did his talk just a couple weeks back in, in Waterville. He was there at the Opera House, and he got a, a picture. He said he was a really chill guy. But that inspired me to throw up there some pictures yeah. on our Facebook page. So I want everyone to come share the pictures that they have with cool people. I got little Steven because I spilled a beer on him many, many years ago in Charleston. We bumped into each other. Coming, I was coming out of a bar, and he was coming into a bar, and I was out the beer, and then it ended up on his shirt. Nice. Um, but because he wears so many scarves, it was really handy, because he basically just took one of his scarves up, and, like, off, and, like, cleaned cleaned us off, which was great. Um, and, and still had scarves on. <laughs> yep, yeah. And then he came and had pizza with us. Uh, he was like, where are you guys partying? And we're like, we're going down to this one place called, what, I can't remember what it was, Johnson's, Johnson's Pizza. And he's like, oh, well, I'll come with you guys. I'm like, sweet, little Steven's going to party with us. And then uh, Maroon 5, before they got big, I got to snap a picture. And you can tell on my face that I'm like, oh, my God, I'm standing with Maroon 5 because there's nothing on my face that hides the, ha, ah! look. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> because yeah. they, well, so you knew who they were even though they weren't famous yet. I, they had just come out with that that first um first album of there so I, we knew because I was working for the pop station at the time so I knew who they were it was before Adam Levine had any of his tattoos because you can see he's standing next to me and he's completely but still pretty tattooed. douchey right oh he was a wicked douche yeah <laughs> the whole band was great 
but he was like, oh it always is oh he was he was like the worst uh so we were there because he oh, uh, gavin degraw was opening up for them so we had lots of fun with gavin and lots of fun with the band but mm. adam levine was kind of a jerk it was like so. when i used to work at one of our sister stations in southern maine we were doing a meet and greet with seether and uh, uh at the last minute literally the last minute the singer's like no i'm not gonna do it and he sent the drummer and the bass player down, you know, and it's like, now what by then it down? was like see their second bass player, their third drummer, whatever. Like these dudes didn't just didn't even matter, you know, like mm-hmm. no offense to them, but it's like these people are not there to meet your, your side men. You know, it's just like, come down and, and do this. He was, he was just being a snooty jerk and <clears throat> he's always like that. There was a band when I worked for the Hard Rock Station in Arizona called Avenge Sevenfold. Remember them? Oh, of course. They had that one big backcountry thing. Uh, uh, they no, they they actually are still pretty big. Oh, they, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. At the time, it was the first single that they yeah, had yeah. out, and so they were like they weren't really on anyone's radar. I was a fan. I was like cool. They I liked it. Whatever. So we got to do a meet and greet with them, and their lead singer, who I can't remember, he's got like shadows something or other, some stupid. Yeah, his name's like M Night Shyamalan or yeah, something. Yeah, whatever. He was the same way. He sent the whole band in and wouldn't show up. And I, then when I saw him actually at the concert performing, I was like, Did Nick Lachey from Ninety Eight Degrees just get like? Uh, one of those chain wallets and a weird edgy vest because that's what he looks like. He yeah. looks too pretty to be, I don't know. But he sounds like he gargles razors, you know, like his <laughs> voice is just like, <laughs> it's like, wow, oh, dude, dude, all right. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> there, have you ever met anybody like a celebrity that's, that surprised you with how cool they were? Um, All the dudes in Seven Dust are like that. I mean, I've met them oh. a bunch of times, you know, on the road and stuff, but uh, mm-hmm. but they're like the most stand up dudes in the business. Like those are the Aww. dudes that will, you know, buy you pizza. They they want to hang out. They will stand outside their bus and stay there until everybody gets something signed. You know, stuff like oh, that. They're just cool. they're that kind of band. Meet and greets uh-huh. left and right, private sessions, like all sorts of weird stuff. Last year in the concert series, I, I realized that the, the '90s guys they were there. They yeah. were there for all of that. Like yeah. that was pretty cool. So very cool. We'll see. We'll see who's coming this year. Of course, still so cool announcements coming out. And of course, this fourteen days, thirteen days from now, Judas Priest will be in Bangor. Yeah. And didn't you just put up a thing so we can put up some photos if people do yeah, have if their? You want to put some photos up of you and famous people? Go ahead. Yeah. Chris, you got to put that one back up there if you're listening because uh, <laughs> that one was a cool one. Do that over at the i ninety five Facebook page. When we come back, we're just going to crank up some classic rock and get into the morning. I-95, Jay Stu and Corey on Bangor's Classic Rock Station on this lovely Thursday gray morning. Oh. Showers to start. Rain this and afternoon. Highs in the 40s, like, Bob. Wicked. Like all the way through till Saturday. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. Sunday, we will be, like, it'll be the, nice, the one nice day we get. Oh, come on. There's a lot of ground to cover between now and Sunday. It's all going to be wet ground. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, but... Toddles has already said so. Sunday will be, too. You just watch. Oh. It'll be sun gray. Uh. Sun gray. Sun gray. Sun gray. <laughs> That'll be it. Super. Well, hopefully yep. we get a little bit of sunshine out there because everything's getting... I don't know. I was I was talking about the fact that the plants... I had these tulips. Before I bought the house, somebody did some actual gardening. So these things are apparently are really hard to kill because, believe me, I'm. it's not like I've tried, but I'm terrible with plants. So each year these little things pop up and I get at least one tulip in the front of the house. And I saw them start right before that blizzardy snow stuff happened a couple yeah. weeks back. And I was like, ah, my one flower, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show up. And then it just, there's nothing. The thing must have died. It was hilarious. That snowstorm, <laughs> like the next day, I almost got stuck in my driveway. And, and I've got four wheel, but it wasn't plowed yet and I had to get out. And it was like, all of a sudden, it was it was like the car just kind of bottomed out. Of mud? Like with mud and stuff? <laughs> no, 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 no. In, in the snow. It just like, it just, and like the wheels couldn't get enough grip because there was oh, so man. much snow under the car. So it was, uh, boy, it was all sorts of fun trying to get it out of there. The weird part was I knew, <laughs> I knew that uh, it wasn't going to freeze, right? Uh-huh. So I'm sitting there like, what am I going to do? I got to get my car out of here. Nah, nah, nah. So I actually took the hose 
and like sprayed it sort of around the wheels under the car a little bit so that it kind of <laughs> like sank just enough that the wheels could kind of touch the ground a little bit that I could go because I could get a little you bit of traction. Off and get going. the snow? Under the car. <laughs> under that, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like. I tried oh, to wow. dig it out and that helped, but I couldn't get the shovel to the middle part. Like I needed to just reduce the the volume a little bit in the middle so the car would just kind of go whoop down like an inch. That's all I needed. You hose the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Only in Maine, man. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you no, know? I mean, wow. I'm a snow hoser, I, eh? You snow, you're a snow hoser. <laughs> I'm a snowser. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Kudos to you for even thinking about that, though. Like, that's, that's genius. But how stupid is that? Like, the whole time I'm like, this is... April friggin' whatever it is, you know, and it's, and here we are. But although in 2020, remember that big storm that knocked yeah, out the power and everything? That was actually like this week. Right. I, I, I saw that was even later than, than, than that my one. memories. I was like, what? Oh my God. Yeah. So, I mean, we complain about it being the first week of April, but it could have been worse. It could have been this week. Could have been the that second week, which would make, I, I, I'd run screaming into the night at that point. <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah, okay, I'm I'm done with the universe. I've I've yeah. had a good life. <laughs> I'm I gonna know. go become I, one with the woods. Do you think we have one more in us here, or do you think we're done? Shush! I don't even. I'm not even <laughs> going to acknowledge it. Not even going to acknowledge it. No way. Uh, right. We do have the forecast coming up in a little bit. Todd Simcox will let you know what the real deal is. But you know, rain 40s tonight. Uh-huh. Rain 30s tomorrow. Rain 50s. <laughs> Wind 50s. Wind. Yeah, you forgot that. Wind. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so stay right here. I-95. I-95, J. Stu and Corey on Bangor's Classic Rock Station, 95.7 FM. That was a request yesterday, wasn't it, you said? Ballroom Blitz, yeah. Well, well, the uh, app. Yeah, right, over the app. Uh, yep. Yeah. So sorry we didn't get to it yesterday. I was uh, having problems getting in and out of there. I was looking for the foreigner people, like um, that, which sounds a weird, like a weird thing to say. I was looking to see if there are any entries <laughs> to check. You out. racist! <laughs> I know, it did sound, for a foreigner to sing with foreigner. That's what I was looking for. Yes. and I got distracted and went down a rabbit hole and didn't get back to the request. So. We made good today, but speaking of getting distracted, I was over at our Facebook page because I put some pictures up there because um, Chris Socklaxis put a picture of himself and David Byrne up for the morning music matchup today because it was right, the talking right. heads. So we put a couple of pictures up there and uh, asked folks to send us pictures of them with cool people. Chris put another one up uh, with the, the band Scratch from Portland. They're from Dublin, I- Ireland, but they were playing in Portland. They were opening for the Dropkick Murphys and Pennywise. And uh-huh. they said, uh, he said that they were really cool. And then uh, another guy named Chad put up a picture of himself with Alien Ant Farm at the House of Blues in Orlando. Very cool. And then Bob Hatch put up a picture of you. <laughs> and it was like he was there with you. So you're the famous person in Bob's life. Who Checks in cool? the mail, Bob. Checks yep. in the mail. Thank there you. There you go. So you can add to that if you'd like over at our Facebook page. We'll just keep that up there today for fun. I'm always curious to see who's taking pictures with whom for famous people. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to a bunch. I've met a bunch. But I'm not like, oh, can we have our picture taken or, you know. Like, right. And if I ever talk to famous people, it's by accident. I know. We had this you know? discussion. You avoid it at all costs, oh, yeah. typically. Yeah. So. yeah. And when I do, it always goes awkward. You know, like I, I fanboy out in the worst ways or something like mm-hmm. that. It's hilarious. It's hilarious when it happens. But I had to interview Malcolm McDowell one time in college, the guy who played Caligula. And right. what's, the, what's from Star Trek? What, did, what was the thing that he played? Was he, he was in Generations. He, I forget right. his character's name, but he was, he was the bad guy. Yeah, and, and he was also, orange. I was going to say, Clockwork Orange. Yeah. You know, not everybody has seen Caligula. That's, that's, yeah, well, I mean, that's, the, I don't know why that's the first one. That that's an acquired mind. taste. I, Caligula, but, uh, <laughs> I had to interview him in college, and I remember it because I've, I've interviewed a bunch of famous people and never really, really been starstruck, but he was like, I just, he was so, such an iconic person. So I remembered when they were filming it, I thought I did a great job keeping my composure. <laughs> and then I went back and watched the interview and the guy that was, was like, oh, you're such a nerd. I was like, I mean, he goes, yes, he was in town in Charleston, South Carolina. We had done a movie. Um, and I can't remember the name of the movie now, but I asked him about his character and he, had said the word because he plays like a leprechaun in this movie and he had said the word leprechaun and because he's like scottish or something like that and the way he said it was so funny that that's the last thing i remember hearing and apparently all i did was like 
giggle the whole time. <laughs> I don't remember. Leprechaun. Yeah. I just, that's, it was like. You sounded entire, like Tiny Tim singing Tiptoe Through the Tulips the entire that's time. exactly what it sounded like, and it ruined everything, and I was super mad about it. But that's the, that's the only time I've ever, like, blanked when it comes to a celebrity. And I think it was just because well he's, he's such a, I don't know, like, such a famous dude. I don't know. Yeah. Well, one hour from now, we're going to get uh, a very famous code going so that uh, you can assault the vault. That's that's going to be a good thing. You're going to crack the code. You're going to get in there. You're going to use the stethoscope and the. It's going to be a heist. That's what's going to happen. You're going to steal the money. We're not giving it away. You have to steal it with your codes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that is one hour away. Make sure you have the i95 app. I-95, Jason and Corey on Bangor's Classic Rock Station, 95.7 FM. You're, uh, I, what you were just telling me is weird. Yeah, we're just not going to talk about just that. Just weird. We're gonna, we're gonna not to, talk you know, that. wet anybody's appetite with weird stuff. It's just like, yep. it's okay. Yep. <laughs> um, not weird. Some of these, like I said, some of the sweet little pictures on, on Facebook that people are putting up of themselves with celebrities. Uh, that was uh, one of the things we were talking about today. Uh, you and I were just commenting. I was reading an article about the fact that all of the people who decided to take electric cars to go check out the eclipse got screwed. <laughs> not, oh. not a, and they were saying like everybody, all the uh, emergency planning people were like, "Don't take electric cars because we're gonna." Oh know. yeah. And then when they would find these places, because there, I have friends who have them. And they, I mean, it's it's cool if there's no line to charge them because you can tell like when they're done and you can plug them in and all that. But they were saying that dozens deep sure. everywhere to charge electric cars, these people came in and, and were stuck. <sighs> yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't wade into that stupid electric car debate. You know, like if you want to drive an electric car, please do. And I get it. It's, you know, there's, there's a hundred reasons why it's awesome. I have a bunch of friends who drive them. I have a bunch of friends who do not and will not, and that's mm-hmm. okay. But there's a time and a place for certain things. And when, like, very official people tell you don't do that, you know, with something like don't take an electric car to a place that's going to be remote and wildly congested with traffic and stuff, like, you you don't. What happens if you get, like, my question is, like, if you get... Uh, down to the point where you can't drive it anymore, and you are in a remote place that has, yeah. and like, what? what ha- do you have to get that thing towed then? Probably somebody has to come and get you from the middle of like wherever. Or you, you are. go to the house you're in front of and ask if they can run an extension cord out to your car. <laughs> can yeah, I plug I my know. car into your house real quick <laughs> so that I can get to the next place? I don't know. So that I think uh, for as much planning as they did, and I heard amazing things out of Holton. People were singing the praises of Holton and how Holton had, at a, as a community, they had, or I mean, they had it set up. They had all sorts of information. They had places, obviously, that you could go and you know get information, food, things like that. Even places that you could throw your your used glasses and 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 by the way, if you are still hanging on to those glasses, uh, Tiller and Rye and Brewer has a, a box that by the end of the weekend they're gonna, I think, send it out to um, Latin America is having the next eclipse, so you can yeah. send your eclipse glasses that way. But uh, you know, everything, everything that I've read for anybody who went up to Holton to watch the eclipse, they just said it was a very well orchestrated situation. So good on Sweet. them for for planning ahead because man. The day of, I don't know if you had heard, but there were a lot of people who changed like the morning of their plans and came here instead of any of anywhere else on the path of totality because it was supposed to be cloudy everywhere else. Oh yeah, so yeah. It was, it was the weird extras. time that Maine had good weather, like <laughs> actual good weather. It was warm. There was not a cloud in the sky, mm. not not to be found anywhere. You know, and then you look at, at a weather map and it's like just in New Hampshire. It's just like. <laughs> Yeah. Covered right over. So, yeah. Yeah. We were, uh, we had the stellar views. Screw we, everybody. We got lucky for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> but, but look right before it. We got a foot and a half of snow or whatever, yeah. like right before that. That's all right. It was like, it was kind of, people could come in and understand what winter was like, kind of. In yeah. Maine, while it was, while it was also fleeting. I so. watched the, the total eclipse from the snow. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it happened. Ugh. So. All right, we're yeah, just a little over 45 minutes away from our first Assault the Vault Code. We got that coming at you next hour, so there's that to look forward to. Then we'll get into a 95-minute classic rock free ride, so stay right here.